Although the term sport washing is relatively new, the principle of involvement with popular activities to cover up issues or to improve an image has been used for centuries. Emperors would pay for gladiatorial games to keep the poor and unemployed entertained and occupied. The emperor hoped to distract the poor from their poverty in the hope they would not revolt. In short, the term sport washing is used when an individual, group, corporation or nation state uses sport to improve its reputation and public image. So what sport washing has actually taken place? There are many examples, like the Summer Olympics held in Nazi Germany. In 1936, Hitler and his regime were using the Olympic Games to showcase the idea of Aryan superiority. Boxing came under scrutiny in 1974 for the undisputed world heavyweight title match between George Foreman and Muhammad Ali, known as the Rumble in the Jungle, held in Kinshasa, in Zaire. The 2019 World Heavyweight Title rematch between Andy Ruiz Jr. and Anthony Joshua, known as the Clash in the Dunes, was held in Saudi Arabia. In 1975, heavyweights Muhammad Ali and Joe Frazier fought for the title in the bout known as the Thriller in Manila, staged in Quezon City in the Philippines. British boxing champion Tyson Fury wrestled in the WWE in Saudi Arabia. Formula One has also been accused of participating in sport washing by holding Grand Prix events in countries such as Qatar, Saudi Arabia and Azerbaijan. The 1934 Football World Cup was held in Italy during the rule of Mussolini. Israel's start-up nation pro cycling team want to tell you how good Israel is. I wonder whether the Palestinians will be supporting Chris Froome in the Tour de France. The Russian government has been accused of involvement in sport washing, with some saying that Roman Abramovich's purchase of Chelsea Football Club in 2003 was done at the request of Russian President Vladimir Putin. Russian state-owned oil company Gazprom's sponsorship of Zenit St. Petersburg and the UEFA Champions League has also come in for criticism. At the time of producing this film, Abramovich is looking to sell Chelsea to avoid possible sanctions and UEFA has severed ties with Gazprom because of the Russia-Ukraine war. There is also the 2022 Beijing Winter Olympics. And Saudi Arabia must have a very big washing machine because they are seemingly involved in sport washing everywhere. Whether it be the previously mentioned Formula One, boxing and wrestling, or the purchase of Newcastle Football Club, hosting the Spanish Super Cup, and the formation of new golfing tours. Saudi Arabia is doing its utmost to present a clean image of itself to the world stage. I really can't see Jamal Khashoggi's widow supporting Newcastle United, can you? There is also Ramzan Kadyrov's involvement in the UFC, the NBA's relationship with Paul Gagami, and the staging of the first Basketball Africa League in Rwanda. And what about the NFL's international partnerships in China? Qatar's hosting of the 2022 FIFA World Cup is a prominent good example of sport washing. Gianni Infantino announced that the 2022 Qatar World Cup was going to be a celebration of football and social inclusion. Try explaining that to the families of migrants who have died in the construction of facilities. So, how does sport washing work? Many people around the world are blinkered or even apathetic and really don't care about politics in some far-off country or even on their own doorstep for that matter. Sport washing reaches the silent majority. All they see is Messi, Froome, Joshua and many more doing something they love in exotic locations and they buy the t-shirt. Companies, individuals or nations harness the positive aspects of sport to wash off the negative associations or problems with themselves. And what happens is that, over time, fans come to associate sponsors, logos or locations with these positive experiences. The experiences involve emotional energy and when people are positively and emotionally involved, they are more likely to remember the brand, person or location concerned. All the positivity distracts from the negative that is trying to be hidden or obscured. At nation state level, it is generally used to direct attention away from a poor human rights record. So do the individuals, companies, states or nations actually know they are sport washing? I wonder whether the regimes actually sit down and say, we are terrible. Hey, so let's sponsor, buy or host some sports and change people's perception of us. If that is the case, I wonder why they don't just change themselves and not have the need to sport watch in the first place. However, I dare say if they were to change and stop the human rights violations, they might be significantly out of pocket or worse still, out of power.
Or do they think they are doing a good job, making tough decisions that are needed to help their country or organisation, and maybe they are just sports enthusiasts looking to get involved and give something back to something they love? Those interested in human rights and generally doing the right thing, quite rightly, are in outcry about sport washing. However, it's very easy to be a keyboard warrior, and just to muddy the waters of this conversation, every time you fill your car, you are more than likely supporting a Middle Eastern regime country that is currently being accused of sport washing. What about made in China? Your Apple iPhone, that's okay, but the Beijing Winter Olympics, they're not. There are many instances of these double standards in society, and also most of the accused countries are supplied weapons by, and do business with, the democratically elected governments of many countries. Also, there are many seemingly equally oppressive regimes that are doing all the things sport watching entails, but without the outcry, because historically they have been involved in sports and potentially the sport watching has already taken place. We are now oblivious to their actions, and they are now accepted as okay and normalised. It's just the new bad countries that are making their headlines now. And really, it is only the countries that have no association with the sport they are getting involved with that we see the biggest outcry. So an obvious question to ask is, is sport washing illegal? Well, sport washing is not illegal, but it is widely regarded as being unethical. Is it fair to blame the athletes, sports teams or sports governing bodies? I think it's a little unfair to be moralistic when telling others what they should or shouldn't do. Remember those grey areas I just mentioned. If I was being completely honest, I'd take the money that is offered. And as mentioned before, sport washing isn't illegal. Take the Newcastle United purchase by the Saudi Public Investment Fund, which has maybe £320 billion to spend. I have no idea how this is allowed to happen, as I thought financial fair play was supposed to prevent spending beyond the club's business income. I presume they will have some amazing price for naming rights to everything Newcastle and get away with it that way. But that isn't sport washing, and that's completely another story. The reality is that the Premier League side are now amongst, if not, the richest club in the world. But there are concerns about the money funding the club due to the alleged human rights violations in the Gulf state. The Premier League has a fit and proper owner's check, and at first, PIF failed the test only for their lawyers to get involved, and very soon after, the purchase became a formality. Newcastle fans are celebrating, all the other fans are criticising. But they might just be a bit jealous. I wonder what they would be saying, just say for instance, if it was their team being purchased by Saudi Arabia. So is it changing the natural or current order of sport? There is no point in nation sport washing unless it's done on a grand scale. And so often the sport or event is a significant change from the norm. And therefore some sport washing events do upset the previous natural order of events. Is that necessarily a bad thing? Not necessarily, because most sports, as we know them today, are because of some previous change. And at the time, those changes might not have been popular. Currently, the most successful football league in the world is the Premier League, which was formed by a breakaway from the English Football League in 1992. Is there anything good about sport washing? The truth is, not really. However, the hope is that with more exposure, those sport washing will realise and kind of understand what they are doing is wrong. However, the expression, leopards don't change their spots, came about for a reason, and it is true. It's very rare that people change. I travelled to China in 2007 and 2008, and things look to be improving there. However, the current situation in China is arguably worse now than it was back in 2008. What I do like about some sport-washed events is when they backfire a little, and fans or athletes demonstrate their feelings and support causes that might upset the host country such as Lewis Hamilton wearing a rainbow-painted helmet in Saudi Arabia and other races. The IOC and many sports governing bodies get away with the awarding of events and help facilitate sport washing by saying they are independent of politics. I agree in a way. I think sport should be free of politics. However, sport is a powerful medium that can facilitate change. South Africa's ban from international sport for sure helped influence and bring about the end of apartheid and FIFA now ensure all federations have a women's national football team, which wasn't always the case. There are many instances of good coming about because of sport getting involved in politics. Will sport washing ever stop? As I've said, sport washing is nothing new, and I don't see why it will suddenly ever stop. It's not illegal. Many spectators say they won't tune into the events, but the figures speak otherwise. They do tune in. 
I was in complete uproar when Qatar was awarded the 2022 Football World Cup. But now I have a press pass. I can't wait for the tournament to begin. The sports persons themselves, their families, their friends, the governing body, everybody are treated like VIPs. The hospitality is amazing. The sums of money are just too big to be ignored and athletes, governing bodies and people of influence that are now open to corruption will always take the dollar. That's the reality. So no, I don't think sport washing will stop. Can it be prevented? In my many years of involvement in sport, I've been heard to say many times, pick your battles. Not liking something is completely different and shouldn't be the reason for it not being allowed or not permitted. Just because you don't like it doesn't mean it shouldn't happen. If history has shown us many times that the sheer amount of sport washing that takes place means that it is possibly impossible to prevent. And also, as with most arguments, there are always two or three sides to the discussion. If it is to be prevented, it must be done so by government or an agency that hopefully is impartial. Just say the United Nations, but I do know that will open up a completely new debate. Maybe it's just too big to go away. It's not illegal. Unethical, yes. But as I said, we just need to pick our battles. Thanks for watching and I would ask just a couple of things from you. If you have enjoyed this film, please hit the like button and also consider subscribing to my channel. YouTube's algorithm loves it. Also share this film to all your friends and family. You should check out my five-star rated book, Interested in Sports, which has thousands of the best sports facts and jokes. It's available online and to order in all good bookstores. Bye.